Hey guys, what's up? This is Alex again from Advanced Procrastination, and we're uh, we are looking today at this uh, FRQ's uh, short answer paragraph argument kinematics. Uh, it's different from the ones that we've done before. This one actually on the test you only get 15 minutes max to do, or you should be spending 15 minutes max on this. Uh, we could get this done probably in like I don't know six seven minutes. Let's get to it. Two identical spheres are released from a device at a time t equals zero from the same height h as shown above. Sphere A has no initial velocity and falls straight down. Sphere B is given an initial horizontal velocity of magnitude v naught and travels a horizontal distance d before it reaches the ground. The spheres reach the ground at the same time t f even though sphere B has more distance to cover before landing. Air, air resistance is negligible. Okay, so we know here already they reach the ground at the same time, tf, and we know that both of them travel the same vertical distance, h, right? tf is the same, and h is the same. So basically, your vertical velocity should be the same. Cool, now let's look at the actual problem here. The dots below represent spheres A and B draw a free body diagram showing and labeling the forces, not components, exerted on each sphere at Tf over 2, so half of the time. Not, not components, right? So even though you have sphere B and you know you have a horizontal velocity, Vy, and then there's a vertical velocity when it falls, Vx, we don't care about that, okay? So, sphere A, let's start with, it only has the force of gravity acting on it, right? So I'll just draw an arrow. Fg, Mg, doesn't matter. I'm just going to go Fg. So that's at this point here half the time, right? So somewhere along the lines of that position right there. And so it would be over here for sphere B. That should be a bit higher, but... It doesn't matter. Here, oh, voice crack. Okay, here, we still only have the force of gravity acting on it. So it would be the same for both sphere A and sphere B. Okay, make sure you draw the same uh, lines there. On the axis below, sketch and label a graph of the horizontal component of the velocity of sphere A and sphere B. That's a function of time. Okay. They just asked for you to sketch. Sketch and label. So, title, right? Not completely necessary, but I will put it there just in case. I'm going to skip that right now, though. It's not too important. We know that the velocity of sphere A is zero because it starts at zero velocity and it's accelerating, right? So it's constant. Our line should be this because it's the horizontal component, right? Sphere A only has a vertical component. So then we would label this line. Actually, change the pencil here. A. Cool. What about sphere B? Sphere B, we know, does have a vertical, uh, not sorry, vertical, horizontal velocity. And that's true for all the points where it's on, right? So no matter where it is, until it reaches the bottom, it will have both a vertical and a horizontal velocity. And we know the magnitude of that is v naught. So honestly, draw any line that's not zero. You could draw it here. You can draw it here. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you have a constant line. I'm going to say b right there. Okay, cool. Awesome. Here's the part of the short answer paragraph argument. The paragraph, right? So in a clear, coherent paragraph-length response, explain why the spheres reach the ground at the same time, 
even though they travel different distances. Include references to your answers in part A and B. Let's type one out. So first, it's important to state that the horizontal, I still can't type, component of motion does not affect the vertical component of motion for a projectile. This means both spheres start with the same vertical velocity, right? Remember on the graph, we only graphed horizontal velocity. They travel the same distance. This means that time taken to travel the vertical distance is the same. You can mathematically prove something here. You can have t equals uh, d over b. There we go. And now we also need to state that they have the same vertical acceleration, right? Because our v and our t is the same. Now, Looking at A equals uh, V over T, we know that the vertical acceleration of the spheres is the same. So, in conclusion, Don't worry, guys, I'm not going to be teaching AP Lang, okay? In conclusion, both spheres travel the, ah, the same distance with the, oh my god, same vertical speed and vertical acceleration which results in a similar time. Fantastic. You don't want to put too much context into a paragraph, you just want to state your points, right? So we've stated that the difference in horizontal motion does not affect the vertical motion, that both spheres start with the same vertical velocity, both spheres have the same vertical acceleration, and that falling the same height would take the same time. So this is it. And we just finished that question. This is, this is your answer. So if you guys have any questions, again, here's my contact info. Shoot me down in the comments. And we'll see you guys next time.